Hello guys, Adrian here. I'm going to be talking to you guys today about what masteries you should be running on Riven and what is the setup that you should be going for in which specific scenario. Like maybe you're going against a tanky champion where you're doing a long extended trades. Maybe you're going against a champion that you need to do short trades against. And I'm going to explain to you like everything that you need to know when it comes to when should you pick it, why should you pick it, and what is the reasoning behind everything. Okay? So first, I'm going to begin with the first page, the first mastery page. We're going to begin with Thunderlords, a keystone that you should be using against champions where you're doing short, limited trades. That means that you can't whatsoever finish off a complete combo against them consistently. So let's say you're going against a champion like uh, Nar, right, where you jump in on him with like a QW auto and then he jumps away and you're not able to catch him. So you're just doing short trades against them, right? That's when you should be using this keystone. So, first, what I like to run when I'm running this in the in the thun, in like the Thunderlords area and the cunning area is here. I usually go for savagery because I need the extra damage to actually CS better. The extra movement speed is not going to help you that much. This helps you out quite a bit, just for farming wise. Especially because I like to run armor pen runes, which is really AD lack heavy, but I'm gonna go into that after. Next one, you should be going. Okay, I get this asked this one a lot, and people, it's just been they've been getting asked for months. So I'm just gonna send them to this video next time they ask me. <laughs> it's like um, the assassin mastery. While people keep saying, "Why are you running biscuits over assassin? Why are you running secret stash?" I'm like, well, there's a reason. If you do the calculations for Assassin, the 2% increased damage is actually kind of worthless. I mean, it's barely going to get you anything. It's pretty, eh, it's somewhat useless. So, the 10% the extra, like, time on the potions and the 15 extra health you get instantly is actually super, super helpful. It's just for overall better sustain. It's just way better than Assassin in general. Here, you don't really use mana, so you're going to go for the extra damage on Merciless. Now, the difference between these two, if you want to switch them every game, depending, if you're going against a melee where you know you're going to get a, a lot of gold just by hitting them constantly and you know that you're not going to have a trade that involves you both getting super low to the point like maybe if you kill them fast enough, you heal up and survive. What I'm thinking of a matchup like this is probably like a Pantheon with Ignite, where you think that the, the trade that you guys do to each other, you guys are going to end up both like 1 HP and then dangerous game might save you. So that's one situation where you might not want to go bandit and maybe you go dangerous game. So you got to interchange those two depending on what you want to do, and which matchup you're going against and which one is more beneficial to you. <laughs> so I usually just like to go dangerous game just in case, you know, but bandit off, it's pretty good. Precision. Precision is kind of, eh. it used to be a lot better, but it got nerfed. So I think intelligence in general is just going to be way better for you. It's just overall a better mastery right now than precision. It gives you it gives you a lot more. Five percent on ribbon is super good, even early when you start with fifteen percent CDR. But later, forty five percent CDR ribbon is quite a monster. You can't even catch right most of the time. And then Thunderlords right here. I don't like to go into the resolve tree when I'm going on th uh, when I'm going Thunderlords. I just like to go the extra attack speed right here on the ferocity tree. You can either go you can either go the attack speed. Or you can go the sorcery, depending on what you like, the, the extra damage or the attack speed. I personally think that the smoother Q canceling and the smoother just you know, auto attacks is better than the 2% extra damage on my abilities. Like I said, 2% extra damage is pretty minimal. It's almost nothing. The same reason while we go into the second part of this tree. We go to the UC Feast, Double Edged Sword, and Expose Weakness. This is more for like a team fight if you're like playing Malphite and you want your team to do extra damage. You don't really want this since you're the one killing everyone. And double edged sword is three percent additional damage. Again, it is so minimal that it's not even worth taking for me. I'd rather take this, which gives me twenty extra, like twenty health. You just like whenever you do, let's say you do a short trade, you get hit by an auto attack, you take, you lose like fifty HP. I'm taking like a NAR auto attacking you, and then you just decide, hey, I'm gonna take this mini, bam, twenty health back. So it turns out to be like a 30 damage uh, auto attack. And you keep, you keep doing this, you keep sustaining through the lane. So it's like overall, I think, better than Double Edged Sword. Now here, okay. I run Armor Pen Runes. Since I run Armor Pen Runes, 
I I like to go natural talent to go get my AD that I'm losing from going the armor pen runes. However, if you go the standard Riven 15, like let's say 15 AD, 7% 7 CDR, or 13 AD, 10% CDR build, I mean rune page, then you should be going uh, vampirism because life steal skills with AD. So if you have a bunch of AD starting, you should be going for the life steal instead of the uh, natural talent. And moving on, the last one is th between this one you can choose which are you want. This one is stronger for laning because you know it gives you the that extra two point five percent increased damage as soon as you stun. So it's overall really strong for that. However, I prefer going bounty hunter just because after you kill someone, it doesn't matter if they're CC or not, the damage that you will do to them is going to be constant. You don't need to CC them; you just keep doing it, and eventually you get even to five percent extra damage. Okay, let's move on to the next mastery page. The next one, Fervor. Fervor itself is a mastery that you should be using when you're going against... Okay, I used to say this a lot, and I used to say that you should be doing it against tanky champions, but it's not necessarily true. Fervor, you should be using it against just extended trades. Basically, let's say you're playing against a Yasuo. A Yasuo or like a Nasus, a Malphite, a Mundo. Where you want to just do a complete extended trade and just keep go keep auto attacking them constantly because you're going to be doing a lot more damage like that as opposed to having thunder lords because thunder lords is for short trades and fervor is for long trades so you got to think about the matchup that you're playing and you got to think do i want to hit that guy over and over again without any problems or do i want to just engage quickly and then disengage with a short trade that's when you that's when you choose between fervor and thunder lords. Now I'm gonna go into like what I choose here. I usually like to choose the same thing I chose for thunder lords, natural talent, bounty hunter, and then the armor pen, and then fervor, and then. But the thing here, for I, when I'm using my fervor page, I actually don't go into the cunning tree at all. I go into the resolve tree because I've uh, this tree doesn't really offer me that much compared to this one, right? This goes for a bit of extra sustain and the ability to CS a bit easier, but it's not worth this. As opposed to getting the extra health regen here, the extra like taking less damage in the laning phase, it gives me. I, I like to choose veteran scars. Personally, if I feel like it's much much better, runic armor is more for when you're scaling into the late game, yeah. And this is more for the early game. Now here I'm playing for the early game. I'm, I I want to kill my opponent. I want to shit on him. <laughs> if you guys know what I'm trying to say. Next one, we're gonna go for. No, we're not gonna go for this one. We're gonna go for the cooldown reduction on your summoner spell. Now that's pretty important because Riven with Flash, you guys know how scary it can be. It's pretty broken. <laughs> now, now the last keystone I use for Riven, the very last one, which is very situational. If I use it like once every 30, 40 games probably, because there's only like around like two or three matchups where you could actually use this keystone and be actually successful. I mean, you can use this keystone every game, but it's not the most optimal thing. This keystone you should be using whenever you are going to play a slow paced matchup. Let's say you're playing against Darius. Let's say you're playing against uh, Trindamir. Let's say you're playing against Olaf. Just basically slow based matchups where you need to just disengage as soon as they start trying to slow you. So you do a short, you do a 30% damage trade so you can proc the Storm Raiders and disengage right away. Because remember that Storm Raiders actually gives you a bit more movement speed than even Ghost would, and it completely almost reduces the slow resistance. 75% is almost complete. Like you, you will, you will not feel that you're actually getting slowed when you have this Keystone. <laughs> Now, uh, for example, like the Darius matchup, you don't necessarily need to go Storm Raiders. It's, that's a matchup where it depends on you, on how comfortable you are in the matchup. But in general, okay, this, this Keystone, you use it for whenever you're playing a slow-paced matchup. Now, for this one, it's exactly the same as my Thunder Lord, as my Thunder Lord page here, here. It's exactly the same. You can copy it depending on what you like. And then just Storm Raiders search. And it's exactly the same on both sides. But that's the basic principle of this keystone and where you should be using the three other keystones as well. The nodes, Fervor, and Storm Raiders are the keystones you should be using on Riven. The rest of the keystones are not actually optimal for Riven. Grasp, Undying, uh, Grasp of the Undying used to be extremely good, but it's been nerfed over and over again, so it's not really that good anymore. All right, guys, I'm, uh, I'm done. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you guys uh, in my Twitch channel, probably most likely tomorrow.
or after tomorrow. Nah, probably tomorrow. Yeah. All right, boys. Have a good one.